So yeah, thank you, Fred. Uh, Fred uh, being the co-founder and CEO of Origin. Um, this is the official, uh, I don't know what we're doing, if it's a podcast or what necessarily, but it's something video, it's something streaming wars. I've been trying to do this for five years now um, with some hiccups along the way. There were some kind of spinoff podcasts. Uh, Fred, you joined us for one, probably uh, one of the one of the best ones when we were doing the founder fodder, but essentially here we are streaming wars. Um, welcome, Fred. Well, thanks, Kirby. It's good to be here again. Like, you know, any opportunity to hang out and stare at your beautiful face for a few minutes uh -huh. and talk about the industry that you and I certainly love and presumably anyone watching this because they're watching it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, appreciate, I, I wouldn't love to figure out what the hell we're doing here other than somebody such as yourself, two smart guys, we'll, we'll figure out and, and make uh, something, <laughs> something great out of this. But the reason for the season is uh, I saw, well, actually, first of all, Fred, why don't you introduce yourself and origin? Yeah. So Fred, um, one of the two co-founders and unfortunately the CEO of origin, we're a creative technology company, plain and simple. We are now five years old. And when we came into existence, when we were pushed out of the birth canal in 2019, Stephen Strong, who was my former boss um, at Newsy uh, EW Scripps, uh, and no, no longer, you know, said that we believed that there was a tremendous amount of potential for brands to be a lot more agile and uh, nimble in their creatives on connected TV if they wanted to actually get the attention of viewers and and turn this very expensive piece of glass from something that ticked awareness boxes into actually creating conversions. Really simple. So we have spent the last five years really pursuing that belief. And now we have four products in market um, all of which are creative orientated that are designed to help our clients achieve uh, objectives that simply good targeting or, you know, a clever strategy can't do because we believe that the most important piece of an ad is what someone sees. So we tell, we help our clients tell very, very different, very exciting stories in the living room in ways they've not been able to before. Very nice. And can you tell us what those four products are? And then for me, first and foremost, like a, 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 an example after each one on yeah. how that's realized and executed. Yeah. So our flagship product and our first is called Origin Slingshot. And what that is, is effectively a, a native content experience that gets built into an ad break within which a particular client's ad will run. So an easier way of describing them would be like 15 second ad extensions, if you will. And that 15 seconds that of that native content experience might run before their ad, might run after their ad, if, there's, if it's more incentive and call to action-y, or it might even run at each end of their ad. But what the primary thing is that Slingshot does is it prevents the brand's ad from simply running after someone else's ad and before someone else's ad. Look at it as being content within an ad break within the larger piece of content, but designed to really achieve certain things that won't happen otherwise. Um, so a good example might be um, something that we did just a little while ago for um, the Alaska Tourist Board, where they really wanted to push more people to visit uh, the state of Alaska at different times of year for different reasons. But they were worried maybe that their ad was just sort of going to get a bit lost amongst all the other travel ads at this time of year. So we built a slingshot experience that that really, first off, got the viewer looking back up at the TV after whatever they may have been watching, whether it was the show or a previous ad, telling them that they might want to get their phone out and ready, and then going into their ad. And then after their ad, which we wouldn't touch, we would simply work around it would then give a few reasons why they should visit Alaska with a QR code to learn more. But the really important bit is that the, the origin piece of, of Slingshot changes every single time it runs. So a viewer at home will never see the same reason why they should visit Alaska. And that's the really critical part of the equation. So how many different creatives in are you throwing at? Throwing uh, at something like Visit Alaska? Well, so some campaigns are 
it, it all depends on the intended frequency for the household. So we'll actually make a finite number and that number would simply be one or two greater than the anticipated frequency for that household for the duration of the campaign. But where our business has moved dramatically to in the last year since we built the capabilities is actually uh, an infinite number. <laughs> like we, we've we spent the last year investing in our dynamic creative capabilities, which means that now like what we do for Visit Florida, which is another travel client and for um, Maine, in fact, we're very travel -y right now, which is fun, is we will actually inject uh, current weather forecasts or precipitation levels or something like that into the origin piece uh, running before, after, around their ad. And in that case, you know, it could be, it could be, there could be many, many hundreds of iterations fundamentally. We also right now have live for a retail client who I'm still not allowed to name, even though we've worked with them for five years, uh, who are running a fall fashion campaign. And they wanted us to help raise awareness to the viewers of how near, how close their nearest um, uh, re, uh, department store is and the times of day that they are open and closed, which vary day to day and week to week. And by the end of that campaign, we'll have, long, we'll have served well over 3,000 different, different iterations of the Slingshot experience nestled, uh, nestled around their ad. Wow. So uh, that was my follow-up question was, and check this out, here we go. <laughs> yes. Oh, so this was actually the reason for the season. I saw this, you posted on LinkedIn. Uh, you mentioned this client you've been working with uh, five years, and then uh, you just mentioned the 300, 3,000 different variations. So this was, that was my question was, is this yeah. the client that I previously referenced yeah. and kind of spearheaded this whole video thing? Yeah, it's super cool. And, and why it's relevant to me at the time is I've been doing, just having many conversations about just different clients and kind of how certain clients were milestones for me in my career. And a big one for me at the time yeah. was uh, we started working with Viacom or the company formerly known as Viacom in 2014. That was huge for us. And what we were doing at the time to float left and propelling us. And yeah. so when I saw that, and, and that's the, that's the, um, I mean, that it's nothing greater than, than just having that relationship and building and expanding up on that relationship. And uh, um, yeah. The so. importance of a, a relationship like that when you're emerging or you've emerged and are growing is important for so many reasons. Like, I, you know, I think you might want to dive into that later, but the strategic uh, and critical nature of having uh, not a lifeboat, but an enabler is what I would describe a mm. progressive client like that as is, is actually how we've developed uh, or at least forged the direction of how we've developed all of our products and even invented new ones. Like that one, that post mentioned uh, another product of ours, Aperture, which we announced in May 2024. So it's only been on the market for about four months. It has already been, been used by, I think, four or five of our clients served tens of millions of connected TV impressions. And it's a creative overlay product of which there are about two dozen in the market, people who claim to be able well, or can do creative overlays on top of CTV ads. Uh, but Aperture is very, very different, very different. And you know, I do want to get into Aperture. I just have uh, one one statement and one question on Slingshot. Oh, yeah. We can move on if that's cool. Um, a lot of times when uh, usually music in the, on in the background, but I'll get burnt out on, on music or can't think of what I want to watch. A lot of times I'll just throw on some, some good old linear TV. And a lot of times I'll catch myself just in the zone doing whatever the hell I'm doing. And I'll notice like just there's a, there's a break. Something got disrupted. And I'll look and I'm probably looking at um, your, your, your slingshot stuff. That's good to hear. Thank you. And that's what it's for, right? You know, it's while it's the cornerstone of the slingshot product, it's actually the cornerstone of a, of almost everything that we've ever thought about at Origin, right? Which is the hard truth about TV advertising, linear connected, just the glass on the wall, which is people don't want to watch the ads, right? They've got a they've got another thing to do. Uh, you know, like people don't like ads despite all the reports that all the lobbies might put out there people don't like ads they suffer them 
And that's fine. But what we have learned over five years of doing this is you can actually get people to truly enjoy it if you're able to create some sort of value exchange, right? If you're able to give them something in return for their time, like a piece of knowledge or a conversation or an aha moment. And that's that's what our clients have the have the bandwidth to do with Slingshot that you can't in what may indeed be a gorgeous but very sanitized 15 or 30 second national spot. Like, you know, you've got to create the most delicious vanilla possible that has to appeal to 100 million households. But with Slingshot, you can tell a different story into every one of those households, which now gives you a, a completely new dimension and therefore an ability first to get people looking and actually get people listening and maybe even conversing. That's one of our clients. Every time we launch, we have a, a strategic call before a, a new campaign. One of the parts of the brief from them is we want the co-viewers in the room talking to each other. Mm. I love it. Right when you were kind of setting up to say value exchange, I was thinking value exchange. And that's something something that's lost. Yep. I mean, I've had so many conversations in my consulting days on this idea of value exchange. And, but we can't get the user to give us their first party data. It's like, if you find a reason, they will. It's, and I always use a stupid ass analogy of if I ask, if you ask me to say, if you told me to give you 10 push ups right now on the spot, I won't. But if you give me a little cookie, I probably will. <laughs> you give me some value in exchange, I'll do whatever you want right. me to do. You want me to register for your streaming service, give you my email address? Look, you want if me to create an account? Want, if a teacher all- wants you to listen, learn, and behave at school, they can't sit there and drone on like Ferris Bueller's teacher, you know? Like, they either got to turn up and, like, be cool and 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 resonate, connect with you. And then suddenly, before you know it, you're you're learning whether you want to or not because – because you actually can feel a, a, a dialogue going on. And that's what advertising used to be. And that's where it's lost its way. You know, I mean, I get put in the sim bin a lot for saying this, and I really don't care. But like, there's this sense that I've been feeling for the last few years really doing this, that the ad, the creative, is like the most inconvenient, annoying thing that people have to deal with when they're when they're like preparing to, to launch a campaign. It, 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 but it shouldn't be, it should be the opposite. This is the, the, the crown jewel. This is the thing that someone sees. A campaign is not gonna be successful because of smart targeting or good data usage or finding the right platforms, right? Like those are all table stakes. Those are all necessary, but they're not what makes a campaign successful. What makes the campaign successful is what that person sees and how they feel like you've communicated with them. And, and that, that is where we are trying to bring back some of these vintage traditions, but also at the same time, paradoxically, tearing up the entire playbook of the past because it all needs to be improved. I had an aha moment back back in um, on a couch in Brooklyn one Saturday afternoon, 2016. So that was before all the streaming war stuff, and and the rhetoric then and still is now like you got this 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 bunch of people saying people hate ads. You have this bunch of people saying no, people don't hate ads. Maybe they just hate bad irrelevant ads. And yeah. this is back and forth. It, it's actually been like this since as long as I've been in the industry. It's alive. It's on demand. It's always is it this or it's that. Um, but my aha moment was I was watching some streaming service, can't remember which one, and it was during an ad break. And mm-hmm. during the ad break, I actually did transact on an ad. Yeah. And I was like, wow. But the ad was actually on Instagram on my phone. And I bought a pair of $180 sneakers from a brand called Greats. And uh, um, and then I'm like, what what the heck? I mean, yeah. it's crazy. I just did this so easily. Yeah. No friction on my phone. Yeah miss opportunity for what's happening on, on the screen. And then yeah. I don't know where we're at. I don't pay attention. I don't, I don't know if I just don't, 
I just haven't noticed lately um, if, if during ad breaks, we're still doing the countdown timers, which I always thought to me was, hey, this is how long I have to do whatever I'm going to do oh. in between the breaks. Are, well, we, are we still doing countdown timers? Some platforms do. Um, some do, platforms. We like, do we like countdown timers as users, uh, as, as professionals? Users, no, as a user with ADHD, I actually find it really annoying because I've never seen seconds count down slower than when I'm watching them count down. But also as an advertiser who buys a lot of media, you know, I don't think it's smart. I, but I do understand what they're trying to do. But I also think it's a little bit of a sort of hollow form of disingenuousness. Like, you know, like, we're here because these people are paying us, but we're all so desperate for them to get out of the way that we're counting down the seconds. Mm. Like, or are you inviting, or are the platforms even inviting the viewers to like go next door and make a gin and tonic right before coming back? Because don't worry, you've got this long. Like, I don't think any of it's necessary. I think it's all part of, um, I think it's all reactionary behavior to the fact that the ads themselves and ad breaks themselves are just, like shit, you know, like they should, our, our ultimate vision at Origin, what drives all of our products and our, our ambition is the idea that one day the ad break will no longer exist and ads will not exist the way that they do today. Like we need to be looking at something far more immersive, far more like cohesive with the general philosophy of why someone has sat down and watched tv you know we need to entertain and not get in the way but 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 still be central to that moment but as i say like as we say in our pitches the world has evolved tv has evolved consumers have evolved but has the ad break changed fundamentally since the first soap ad was released 50 75 years ago no. Fred, this this is a perfect segue to uh, what I'm introducing on the fly as as the segment called. Do you know what this image is? Yeah, this, this is great. I love I love this. All right. Do you know what this is? I mean, it, it yes, it's a map of America with a watch dial on it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my bell? Where's my bell? <laughs> oh, that's exactly that's exactly what it is. Um, it's, it, but it also, in addition to being a, a map of the United States with, with the clock in the middle of it, this was the very first video ad in the world. It's for Belova, Belova watches in 1941. Yeah. It was during a, uh, I think a Philadelphia Phillies game, uh, but most importantly, Brooklyn Dodgers game. Um, and, and, and more or less, like we're still banging out the same format. I mean, ads look a lot better than they did for color, uh, a lot more creative and all that, but like, dude, we're, we're approaching like 75 years um give or take some bad I, math we're still I banging actually, out the same formats i actually think the ads are a lot worse than they used to be um but i'm saying that as a brit as well where i think we have led the charge for you know forever in storytelling right and that's what i think that's why i'm saying ads and aren't as good as they used to be because the most critical part of that connection wanting someone to buy something isn't because you're ramming a lease term down their throat, right? It's because you're 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 creating an opportunity for them to imagine holding that thing, sitting in that thing, touching that thing, owning it, whatever that may be. And that has to come through with a story. That story has to relate. That story has to be relevant, not just because I'm an auto intender. It has to speak to me or it has to tug emotionally at me. Like yeah. probably the most powerful things, that, you know, creative executions we have ever done are like, don't sell anything, but they they touch the most deepest inner part of, of what you can have, which is your emotions. And then you're talking, then you're in business. Then if the product is good, the product will then sell itself. If I if I swap out what you just said about advertising and inserted sales, this could have been a whole Sandler selling Sandler selling system thing. Like it's it, it's the same thing. I mean, in a lot of ways, I feel like a lot of these ads are just kind of cold sales. 
They have yeah. to be meaningful, provide value for something that, and be perfectly timed and relevant uh, for some sort of transaction of some short sort to take shape. Yeah, I mean, I we're very lucky. Every brand that engages us, like they always actually, we seem to be lucky. We get beautiful, beautiful ads to play with. Like somehow we seem to be finding the storytellers and then we just get to build upon that story. But it just it bothers me when I'm so, I make a point at home of being a TV and ad supported TV consumer next door in my living room, right? Because I need to know how it feels and I need to see what's going on. And I'll sometimes just turn to my turn to my wife and just go, "What the fuck was that about? Like, that was a waste of someone's money." Hmm. And then sometimes I'll also turn to her and go, "That was clever." Whether it was because it was witty, smart, sly, you know, like that. Those, those are the ads, right? Because I always tell people, I remember the first ad I ever saw. I was about four, five years old, and it sold nothing. It was a cryptic ad that ran on TV in the in the mid '80s, and it was just blue jelly writing that just went across the screen. That was it. Six months later, Ariel releases the world's first cold wash laundry detergent. Mm. Forty years later, here I am talking about it. Wow. I, I, that, that, that really drives me. Yeah. And I do talk about that. when I go up on stage, I talk about that. When I'm talking to my wife, I talk about that. Like, you know, this is advertising. We're storytellers. We are here to help people fall in love with something. We are here not to tell someone to love something, but for, have them figure it out for themselves. It's awesome, man. Should we go into Aperture? Kind of no, no. Product, product number two. So tell us, tell us what Aperture is about, what you're doing there. Yeah. So Aperture is our newest um, product uh, launched in May 2024 this year. So this year, God, this year. And it came about actually because a client was asking for something like it. And let me now just caveat this whole point by saying it's, a, it's an overlay product. And there are lots of overlay products on the market. So the fact that they were asking for us to be the provider of an overlay when there's two dozen out that they could have picked was interesting to me. So we decided to dive in and find out why. What were the others lacking in? What were they? What what did they do? What did they not do that the client wanted? Right. And that became the premise of what Aperture is as a creative overlay product on to go on on top of ads whether it's a pop-up or a push-up or something um, that other people don't. And that's become the, like, the, the driving force behind it, which is Aperture is about the most white glove version of like an overlay product that exists in the market today. It's not just about sticking a box up there or shrinking the ad back to being 10% of its size, you know, and forging, forcing you to pay all your attention on the right side of the screen when the ad's running on the left. If you, if you want that, just don't run the ad, right? Instead, Aperture is designed to fall so seamlessly and natively into your, into your creative, the brand's creative, that, a, that Johnny Viewer won't even realize that it's like a separate creative layer. You know, it's not about creating a distraction. It's about building on top of or having a brand be able to say something dynamic that they can't do, you know, in the in the at the at the creative agency's end when they're doing the, the live action ad or something like that. And it has been immensely successful. It's been incredible fun. And it's also been fun to have the challenge of like for the first time ever, you know, in our product life, in our company's life and product history, we've now got something that people do compare to something else. We've never had that slingshot. We've never had that and others, but like this has, and it's been an interesting challenge and it's been fun to test the, the goal behind it um, by whether or not we win that pitch. Can, and can you walk me through like what that execution looks like? Like I'm thinking like maybe a squeeze back, but it sounds like one of the options. Um, like, can you walk me through what that execution looks like? 
Yeah, so um, it, we we have fundamentally like six different styles of of overlay, and either the client chooses or we choose which of those basic styles might be deployed to go inside a client's 15 or 30 second spot. And that really depends on what the objectives are. So we do have little lower thirds, so little bars are along the bottom if people want to talk about game scores or, or betting odds or something like that. We do have these uh, feature boxes that can go actually anywhere on the screen, uh, which is why I talk about being white glove because when a brand gives us their creative for us to build this dynamic overlay experience, we actually will do a forensic dive into that creative, noting every moment of every frame transition, the, where the audio is, where the key moments in the ad are. And we make sure that whatever overlays or, or, or pop-up experiences we're creating, whatever we do put in, is not going to get is not going to draw away or distract from the message that's in the main ad. And so we have a number of different flavors. You have this really cute little corner curl that happens. So like if maybe someone wants to really keep your attention during a long spot, they might have it, these little corner curls pop up and create like a scavenger hunt kind of experience. It's, it's ultimately whatever it needs to be in order to complement and feel native to the creative that's already been produced, wow. but also depending entirely on what it is that it's there to do. So for a lot of our travel clients, it might be a feature box that is giving the temperature right now and then transitions to the temperature tomorrow and this weekend. For a retail client, it may be today's flash sale on a product and then tomorrow will be different. Again, this dynamic nature, but also if you're a, a retail brand with a lot of first, per, first party data and you're going into households where you know these people are addicted to buying shoes or jackets or sh shirts or whatever it may be, or perfume, you can they can send different product promotions into those households you know, at the glass level in the living room and it can be a different promotion every single day. So, so how, do those, how do those get managed? Um, are those get managed at the time of execution or are those managed, like let's say, let's say for example, I just decided I'm a retailer, I have a, I'm gonna have a sale tomorrow. I just okay. conceived it, nobody knows this, not my, especially not my ad tech partners. So how do I then communicate with you saying, hey Fred, we're doing the sale tomorrow, we need to start promoting that like ASAP. It would be, we would, you you know, we would get called. There would be a creative, so it wouldn't be tomorrow, sadly, because what we do is handmade. Um, but that said, if it's a brand like others where we're consistently doing something, there is no great big product, you know, production sort of story. Most of the groundwork is already there. We have a creative kickoff call. You then send us the ad that we're going to build the treatment around. There'll be maybe then one or two rounds of like concepts that we send you away. And within about, let's say maybe five days, your ad will be live. And then all you've got to do is feed us like the, like via an API or something like that. Um, the information that's going to be fed into that overlay, if it's going to be dynamic and that's all very easy. And that's where we've really invested this year. So if we've worked with you before, you pick up the phone, you say, guys, I'm doing a really big fat sale tomorrow. Um, run this. That's the end of it. And this this might be a can of worms. And and if it feel free to say it is. So you do these creatives. Like where do those go in ad land to then show up on my Samsung TV or or whatever my TV device is? Like is there is it is this a can is that a can of worms of a question? But like all right, you create this stuff. Yep. Cool. How does it get po like? Is it like is there a server somewhere that? Yes. Well, these so for Origin to do what it's done, because one of the pieces of magic about this that might anybody watching this might just either be wondering or have assumed that maybe the wrong way. Part of what makes Origin really, really special is a hundred percent of what we do is SDK free. We have no need for any of our publishers to have any kind of inbuilt like SDKs or technology to enable our, our dynamic creative capabilities. Literally, what actually gets served to Kirby, who we know is a massive tattoo enthusiast, and he's going to get something about his tattoos delivered 
today and then tomorrow something different versus your next door neighbor that's like really against tattoos and so maybe they're getting something anti-tattoo what's actually delivered to your living room and to theirs is actually a flat mp4 file there's nothing there's nothing clever about the finished file but all of the clever stuff happens within the origin platform and as a result we've had to build in order to be able to then create and tag and deliver our dynamic creatives origin has also had to build its own ssp its own dsp and its own video server and wow. so we typically manage from soup to nuts most of most of what our clients ask us to do for them so we are a big media buyer that's cool as hell i want to talk about that on or off this um however happens uh some other time walk us through the third product origin ad studio my favorite and the least adopted so i don't know what that says about me it was about and this you're gonna tell us well i was gonna say I'll, how yeah when was it created how long has it been now i'll keep it very simple because it's very simple and if i try to complicate it then it won't be clear what it is in early 2022 uh, some friends of ours of ours uh, at lg came and said we have a client a brand and they can't advertise with us right now because they haven't got any good ads to run and we said oh well that's interesting and we spoke to this 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 client they were a, a personal lender and we found out their pain point which was we're in a pandemic and people are kind of running out of money but also people don't know what to do themselves so basically we want to rediscover our, our brand voice in a way that resonates in this mid to post pandemic world and we don't have any creatives and we don't want to go and spend three million five million dollars producing these creatives on the basis that we've sat in our ivory tower choosing what our new tagline should be and what our how direct our voice should be about borrowing money and we said well we've got this product slingshot that is that creates content designed to wrap around ads mm -hmm. but the exactly the same methodology and exactly the same like creative techniques can be used to create the ad itself like you know it, like yeah slingshot takes an ad and it builds an extension well why don't we just take everything we know and actually build the ad and create dynamic ads instead of dynamic ad extensions and that's the origin ad studio and so for that client we ended up producing uh, a huge number of di different iterations it, with different color concepts different directness of voice different jingles different taglines different everything and we ran them all in market for three months measuring every one of them independently to establish uh, running brand studies against each of them independently to establish which one was resonating best with with viewers at home and so that was that is the ad studio make ads but the thing the reason the big value prop for the client wasn't just being able to test so many different ads at once it was origins business model it's pay to play like if we're running the media for you if we're handling if it's a fully managed campaign the way we're running the media you don't pay for that creative it's just part of the campaign that's cool that saves people a lot of money and i would imagine you, you said you're measuring this stuff like are you able to perform with all the data and measurement you're getting some sort of like what i'll just call ad um, um, um cro why can't i think of cro um conversion rate optimization techniques absolutely into, into these creatives and like hey they're not res they resonate with this copy more than that copy that's yes. run with this that's yeah it's brilliant and then i don't know how big that addressable market is or the use case of that brand that wants to advertise but doesn't have the creatives but i mean unless you have creatives you can't work with uh you can't work with slingshot right so this now Open enables up. origin to work with the whole other use case of i want to be on Samsung TV, and Vizio right. TV, but I don't, I don't have spend all my money on the ad, right? All, all the creative I have are display ads I run on Instagram exactly. or Facebook or, or Google yep. Display Network. Exactly, exactly. Wow. And that, the, the market, the, the exciting market that opens up for us uh, is, is local advertisers. You know, imagine that you're, it's, Stephen got me into the habit of this one, Jimmy's Pizzeria, right? on third and main street 
and every Friday you really want to get. Wait, 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 wait! This isn't a real pizzeria, though, right? No, it's not. Because I'm trying to think where uh, I'm Jimmy's on Third. I'm thinking Main. New York. I'm like Third and Main. We're Third, third and Main. Third and Main Street. Third and Main, upper Upper West Side, Manhattan. <laughs> it, Jimmy Jimmy's Pizzeria every Friday night wants to get as many drunk people as possible who have just watched the game, you know, the college game down the street into the pizzeria with you know um, a free a free soda with every slice, right? But they can't just reach these people on Facebook and display. You know, they actually want to advertise during the game to the people who are watching, who aren't just at the game. And and but Jimmy may not have a four million dollar budget for that ad, especially given that he's going to want to tell a different story every week. So it the, what it opens up to local advertising to even then think now to tier two, tier three, auto right with some of these dealerships that actually have autonomy over their ads. You know, maybe one of them had an accidental delivery of 410,000 snot green convertibles, right? Like they've got to shift that inventory now. Well, they want to tell the world, hey, we're doing a special deal on snot green, you know, pickups this week. And next week, maybe they'll get a delivery of something else. Like that kind of agility and then to be able to layer in and try different calls to action and different incentives to get people visiting your dealership to buy your snot green car. Like that's really cool. And for it to cost what? The cost of delivering an impression. Dude, this is this is great stuff. Uh, I, I, I kind of agree. I think it's quite cool. Uh, I uh, not we're not uh, you're not biased um, at no, all. Not remotely. But and I want to hear about the fourth thing. I actually have no idea what the fourth thing is, and maybe I'm just flubbing. Um, but uh, before before we get to there, um, yep. I, I can't get a straight answer on this. Like every time, we're just I'm, I'm watching a something ad support and I just see terrible executions, whether it's the same she shed ad a million times or, oh, or just, just whatever it is. Like these ads are in German. Like there's not a German yeah. person here. Like I just see so many bad executions that I it, behind like very large companies. I often wonder, is anybody not looking at this stuff? Yeah, because they are. I have to imagine there's so much money being wasted. And that's like a startup guy start many things like, dude, like, it's bad advice. Everything counts maybe here. it's avoidable. I get so I get on a on, on on a on a particular streaming service. I get I have where I watch a lot of my horror. Uh, I watch it both the same service in the living room or on my desktop. So I watch a lot of horror while I'm working. I will get in the first ad break of a session. I will always get this one brand's ad, and I have done for two and a half months. I will never ever use that product now as a result i feel invaded i feel like disrespected and the negative sentiment i feel towards this particular brand because someone has said to them what you should do is you should run in the first break that that this person sees every time they switch on their tv and it's the same ad every time like if they had if if these people at least had like like allowed us like allowed them to be our client at least we could tell people a different story every single time but they don't it's the same thing the same jingle the same reasons why i should be using their product and it drives me up the wall and it drives me it's driven me off that streaming service and do you think they're doing that just to you fred or do you think steven if you use a service is getting the same shit? so i did a bit of diving in because i know people and it's to everybody in the New York DMA. Hmm. It's not for Fred. It's not for Johnny's Pizza, is it? Yeah, <laughs> I got on that. I would. I would love that. I would. <laughs> I would be a resident of Third and Main. I'll tell you what. Like, I mean, I don't mind, I don't mind a good slice. Yeah. Oh man. Um. It's crazy. So, I mean, you were saying people are like, if I'm a brand, I'm. A, I don't know if I want to mention any brands, but like, I know this is being wasted. Like. They should, but they're taking the guidance of somebody who's giving them really shitty advice. Maybe it's because they want their money. I, there's a lot, there's a real, I'm not going to use the word transparency in this, in this chat because I think it's the most over and badly used word in our industry, but there is a lot that's not told to brands. There's a lot that's steered away from brands 
and we actually developed we have a reputation uh, at origin for like being quite the opposite honestly i think it's why we retain the clients that we do because they know that they're just not getting bullshitted like we would sooner not take their money for a new campaign than tell them a lie or gloss over a bad result like we've given clients bad campaign results before we're humans yeah so like okay i mean like please don't fire us but like this is what it is and this is what we've learned this is what we'll do better next time but that's not what wall street likes you know and maybe mm. it's just because we're not a public company i mean obviously we really should be but no we really really should oh be. thank thank goodness thank you you're not we're not it's that's yeah I, no. got, I, I got stories. I got no stories. reverse spats here. No, we're um, good. Well, on my side, what I'm doing right now with the streaming wars is uh, I look at kind of, I, I get that, that part, that industry being a digital publishing, still learning what the, what the hell to call it. But what we're doing right now, it's, 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 it's content and it's, it's, well, it's of course free, but I look at the two models right now, both of which are, one is definitely more struggling it's ad supported and you yeah. go to a website and, and they're struggling so they'll throw more ad creatives in your space uh in your face i'm sorry uh i actually <laughs> there's there's one in particular it's kind of like your offensive streaming service your horror streaming service and what this brand does is uh um i always joke like it's 200 word article they'll throw 100 display ads on the screen mm. I did the math on that because yeah, there's no way they put a hundred ads against a 200 word article. Um, I think it was 600, it was 600 words, about 10 ads, but the ads were for the same shit. It was for Canva. I did this yesterday and I did the math. And it was about for every 60 words, there was a Canva ad. Is that like, was it, was it Forbes? I, I can't mention, I don't think I should mention it's not, I'll mention but it. I don't think I should mention it. Well, I'll it, mention it, it actually wasn't. Um, you can mention all the sites you want. It wasn't that one though. When I'm on sites, I, I, I'm reminded of why I'm so pleased that as an agency, we are on TV. Like God has the bottom of that barrel been scraped. And is it just awful? Like, I remember I even wrote about it on LinkedIn. Like I remember I did click on a Forbes link to read an article about something. And I thought, this is Forbes. I couldn't even see the words. I couldn't read the, the article. Terrible. I'm like, am I that, is that, I mean, God, is this, is this what we're, is this what we're reduced to? But I tell it. you what though, and this is a good way to sort of tie a knot in some of this, like, because I've just realized that at some point today I'm going to have to go. But like, it's it's the reason why you, people need to think harder now about TV. By TV, I mean connected, by which I mean next door, right? Like, because there's like, there are some stats out there, right? People see like, people are exposed to 200,000 different ads a day, whether they know it or not. You know, we are fatigued by the idea of being sold to. The, you know, so we've really got to like think originally and we've also got to adopt what has worked on these other screens, which is like closeness to your proximity in storytelling and like, you know, and, and, and ways of surprising you that, that, that gets you to start talking in the room and things like that. You know, that really, really, really is important because it's what people are used to. It just we need to think further. We can't think about what works today. We need to be developing and delivering what we believe is going to work in the future. And that way you're just about able to keep up with how consumers really feel. Oh, uh, I hear the dogs. Do you? Oh. I yeah, left I, I spent uh, Birdie up the street to be with our guess, neighbor this often. Guess someone guess someone's here. Um <laughs> not trying to cut our coconuts though. Well, we got that done last week. Uh, <laughs> all right, like for, a euphemism for, for something. That, He's no, here to cut, it's actually don't cut my coconuts. Um all right, fourth fourth product. What do we have here? Oh, so this was one of our older ones, and we're kind of like pushing it back a little bit, but origin slate. It's actually one of the smartest but one that we've really yet to work out what we should do with. 
and it all ties back to anyone who has watched like maybe some live sports on TV or any kind of linear, like fast, uh, you know, style um, TV where they haven't put in the compression ad break technology. You basically get a don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Right. And it might be a blank screen with that. It might be a little swirly, whirly bit of creative. We we thought this was a terrible wasted opportunity so we decided to turn it into like an entertainment experience so that people wouldn't just flick to the next channel or churn or go somewhere else like they would actually find themselves glued to a game that still served the purpose of a slate which is saying wait for your show is coming but also like got people actually staring at the tv and and it was we ran it for about 14 months with a few folks learned a lot and uh, and then we started in actually working out how to put like how to get it sponsored and that that opened up the door to dr on connected tv in really interesting ways that we definitely don't have time for today that's pandora's box wow that's super cool and everybody's familiar with uh, espn we'll be back after the commercial break slates probably the yeah, like you why? type in ad, you type in CTV ad slate or ad slate or any any phrasing Google. It's probably one of the first. Yeah, ones yeah. Like I mean, it was it's a really good concept and it was very successful. But I know it's got a stage of evolution to go through now, and I just need to prioritize that. But right now, it's all hands to the aperture pumps, and of course, election season because yeah. we are we you know we've we are directly representing a, a lot of political ad spend this year for a lot of candidates and what their needs are are significant and um and and rather exciting actually that's awesome congrats uh with, so origin is five years old yep we turned five in june can't believe it <laughs> and real real quick on the name um it's one of my least favorite things to do on on any venture is, is the name what's the what's the what's the significance of the name yeah what's origins origin right yeah there um, you go um steven and i when we knew that we were serious about doing something you know i I've, I've done this a few times before right origins the third company i've been involved in starting and my wife is not thrilled about that but like the I said to him, you know, before we come up with a name or anything, let's just be understood as to what our mission is. And what we kept on doing was finding ourselves going back to like, we need to cut through and cut back through all of the noise and all of the mess and all of the bullshit of advertising and go back to the core and rebuild from the, rebuild from the ground up from scorched earth. And from that, we just found ourselves called Origin. I, th I, I think a lot of media companies should uh, adopt the same approach, um, but they can't call themselves Origin. It's taken. Well, they can uh, if they acquire us. They're welcome to. There you go. So it's it's possibly open for that. <laughs> yes. All right. One 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 question before before I let you go here, Fred is uh, I'm sure um, I'm sure when I look at my little news terminal and, and seeing everything that's the latest and greatest with the space, I'm going to be presented with a whole bunch of things saying how. We figured out advertising and ads great, and ad land's a wonderful place to be. But uh, why I love you, Stephen, uh, and you're some of my favorite people in the space is you call it, you call it, you call it, you call it as it is. So what's the what's the number one thing one for what's the number one thing for you that you think's wrong with with the current state of advertising CTV advertising in general? Um. Uh, a lack of alignment on expectations and its capabilities. I find that brands are often not aware of how much they could actually achieve on connected TV because the people who anyone who tells them is willingly putting a red target on their back. But that's how you make progress. You know, we are often like really over offering and overexposing our successes and failures to what I was saying earlier, or when we're planning a strategy, why don't we could try and do this? We could do that. You know, like we did this for a, 
um, we're releasing the case study soon, actually, I hope, um, you know, we're, we're coming to the end of a 12 month campaign for a, a paper kitchenware disposable plates and cups company, right? And, you know, the brief was uh, that they wanted more people buying their products. That might sound obvious, but again, for connected TV, that's actually pretty advanced that they wanted a, a, a ROAS, they wanted a return on ad spend, right? Uh, directly attributable. So we partnered with NC Solutions and we worked out exactly what to do and how to do it in order to be able to present to the client precisely for every dollar spent with origin in the living room, how much money was being transacted on the high street in stores, you know, with those products. And that showed the brand and their agency, holy shit, like, like we, like really we can do this. And we, and you know, it's up to them to rely on it and trust it and not think that we're selling them vapor basically. Like we believe it, but it's up to them autonomously to believe it and believe what they're seeing to do their homework. And we did, they did. And we were able to show them, uh, I, I think off the top of my head, that for every dollar they spent on the portion of campaign that we were measuring uh, over, like it was January to May of, of a 12 month flight, <clears throat> they, the, you know, they were making a dollar 76 in the stores of people who were seeing the ads that we had treated for them and were choosing to buy their products over the competitors' products on the shelf next door. And and I think there needs to be a lot more of that. That's awesome. Um, how's that tracked? Uh, you'd like, have how to do we know. how how do we know how do we know? That's a. And, that's and I mean, a, maybe I can come to my conclusions knowing the brand, but I have to presume the brand is in my grocery store. And then how do you know? How are I you mean, able to track that? That's down that's to awesome. the odds, right? At NC Solutions, right? I mean, you know. They're the people that say they can do it. We do our diligence and think that we believe that they can. I can't, I won't dive into all of the ways that they do yeah. it. It's detailed, but that's the whole point, right? Everyone is in their respective wheelhouses of being good at something. And NCS is very good at that. So a Claritas, I want to give a shout out to, to them. I think they are such good people making massive strides in connected TV. Um, but we also even use some of the vintage peeps, right? Like we're about to, you know, we're we're about to run a campaign and use Foursquare to measure against that. We did that actually. We did that for a fast food chain uh, in the south uh, a few years ago to measure like everyone who saw the Origin elevated um, ad for this particular fast food sandwich joint. Like how many actually went to the fast food sandwich joint because of it? You know, and we tracked from that household to that store um, and you know all these things like there are lots of different ways on top of then everything you can get if you were running a more performance-based QR campaign where you want the performance to be you know like you appreciate that the phone is where someone wants to transact mm -hmm. like that's very easy and then you just go the other ways like T-Vision have been a very big partner of ours they help us track like physical attention to the screen which is the the, the primary need for everything you know i mean we've worked with so many people uh loop me is our measurement uh, is our our measurement study uh, brand study partner who we love because they're really nimble you know all of this is stuff that we lean into uh and it's actually it started with the fact that when we were zero years old and we had zero case studies against our name we now have over 40 but like we had this this Occam's razor or this catch-22 of someone will work with us, but they want to see a case study, but we need you in order to get the case study. So we just simply offered to overshare everything that we could in terms of the reporting. And that just became a habit. And now awesome. I think it's good practice. That's great. And you guys uh, do a good job with the case studies. Yeah, we try. We really do try. Brands often don't want to be named, but we have a few. Orange Theory Fitness, uh, we released a case study earlier this year. Uh, the Alaska Tourist Board, Visit Florida, um, iRobot, um, you know, others, people like that. Nice. Very cool. Well, I want to appreciate you for jumping on the inaugural um, podcast thingy that we're doing. Um, we don't want to podcast figure it out with thingy. anybody else. Hey, I'm going to stop this recording, but, but, but you can stay on. I'll stick around. All right.
Thank you, Fred.